Greetings, YouTube. The Doctor is in. Dr. Urius Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and & Dragons. And welcome to the channel that brings power gaming to the next level. Today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis, we're talking about the spell Either Realness or Either Real, Ethereal, Etherealness, however you want to say it. Uh, this is a 7th level spell. It is usable by bards, clerics, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any question or comment, please leave a question or comment. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I've got another video. So, F the realness. We're giving this one a C. It's not really... It, it can be used in combat kind of as a panic button. But for the most part, it is one of these spells that's used as kind of a scouting spell outside of combat or in near combat situations. So it is a seven level spell. It takes one action to cast range of self, verbal and somatic components. It does last for eight hours. However, there is an asterisk next to that, which we'll talk about. You step into the border regions of the either real plane in the area where it overlaps with your current plane. So remember the Ethereal plane is around the material plane. And so the outer planes do not border the ethereal plane. Just remember that. So you and it's going to discuss that here in a little bit. So you remain in the border ethereal for the duration or until you use your action to dismiss the spell. So you're either there for eight hours or until you stop being there. Till you will yourself to not be there anymore. So if you will yourself to be there for one minute, then you're only there for one minute. But you can be there for up to eight hours. During this time, you can move in any direction. If you move up or down, every foot of movement costs an extra foot. So if you go up 10 feet, it costs 20 feet. If you go down 10 feet, it costs 20 feet. You can see and hear the plane you originated from but everything there looks gray and you cannot see anything more than 60 feet away. So essentially it's like dark vision. While on the ethereal plane, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on that plane. Creatures that are not on the ethereal plane cannot perceive you and cannot interact with you unless a special ability or magic I think they said magic item or magic spell, unless a special ability or magic, I guess it's just magic period, has given them the ability to do so. You ignore all objects and effects that aren't on the ethereal plane, allowing you to move through objects you perceive on the plane you originated from. When, when the spell ends, so when you turn it off or after eight hours, you immediately return to the plane you originated from in the spot you currently occupy. If you occupy the same spot as a solid object or creature when this when this happens, you are immediately shunted to the nearest unoccupied space that you can occupy and take force damage equal to twice the number of feet you are moved. So if you're moved five feet, then you take 10 force damage. The spell has no effect if you cast it while you are on the ethereal plane or a plane that does not border it such as one of the outer planes, like the Nine Hells or the Abyss. And then you can upcast this. So when you upcast this uh, spell using a slot of 8th level or higher, you can target up to three willing creatures for each slot above 7th level, so including you. So at 8th level, you can do you and three creatures. At ninth level, you can you do you and not six creatures. Okay. So I one thing I do want to point. So what I what do I think that this spell could be used for? Let's let's start with that. Uh, so again, it's a panic button. If you are a DM, think about this spell being used by a boss or someone that you you know some reoccurring villain that you want to get away in case they get hammered by your players. If you want the story, the adventure, let's call it the adventure. If you want the adventure to continue with that particular non-player character, this is a pretty good spell that serves as a panic button for that character. They can cast it. They can go through the floor, into the ceiling, whatever, get away. And uh, generally, 
player characters, even at this level, are not going to have access to things that are going to let them see into the either real at the real plane. For characters, for player characters, again, this is a panic button in case you need to get away quickly from a situation that you're stuck in, especially if you can cast this at ninth level so you could cast it and then everybody could come with you and get away as a panic button. All, and this is during combat. Alternatively, alternatively, it can be used as a very good scouting mechanism or re reconnaissance mechanism. So you or, or more than you, so if you cast it at 8th level, it's you and 3. If you cast it at ninth level, it's you and 6. The, par the party of players could be on the ethereal plane and they could be scouting that way. But remember, you can only see 60 feet. One, two, two creatures that have true sight can see into the ethereal plane uh, within the same range of their true sight. So they can see you. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they can affect you, but they can see you. So... Um, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on that plane. Creatures that aren't on the ethereal plane cannot perceive you and can't interact with you unless a special ability or magic. So the special ability would be true sight, which would allow them to perceive you, but they can't interact with you unless they have an ability that allows them to interact with you. Now, the other thing that DMs should think about, and this used to be in previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons, and that is there used to be a random table that when you went to the ethereal plane, there was a random encounter table for things that would see you and come after you. And they were some pretty nasty, pretty big things. And I know some of this stuff is in like uh, Spelljammer and things like that. So you should think about that. If, if your players are going to constantly use this, there should be some danger. It shouldn't be something that they can just do and get away with. There should be a, a modicum of danger that comes with this. All right. That is what I have for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.